The London Streets Traffic Control Centre, the LSTCC, is the nerve centre of London's road network. It quite literally keeps the city moving day and night. So in much the same way as a railway signalling centre keeps trains moving on the railways, the control centre here keeps traffic moving on a day-by-day, hour-by-hour and even minute-by-minute -minute basis. If you get stuck in a traffic jam for any reason and then suddenly, mysteriously, it starts to move again, chances are that's not by accident, that's due to the skilled work of the people here in the control centre. We have a lot of technology that we use here, including um, adaptive traffic signals to help manage traffic flows, but also CCTV cameras, image recognition and incident detection, which gives us early detection of incidents on the road network. Well, we've got some big problems on the A406 Pink and White. New South Gate this evening. We have 6,000 sets of traffic lights, which we use to control the flow on the majority of those roads. Traffic control officers here can control the traffic signals, they can direct all sorts of response teams to get people to incidents as quickly as possible. Just to confirm that location, southbound, off slip, two sun in the sands, is that correct, over? We have all sorts of events that happen to us on the network. We have spillages, we fill in potholes, we deal with knockdown traffic lights. It could be mechanical failure, punches, or running out of fuel. And that is the bulk of the problems. And then on top of that, there's road traffic accidents. So according to the nature of the incident, we either close one lane or close the whole carriageway to enable our contractors to deal with the incident as quick as possible. We want to cause the least amount of traffic congestion and disruption to Londoners. What we're trying to do here is to become predictive so that we can react to incidents on the network really quickly. We've got about 140 variable message signs that are owned by Transport for London. So if there's a problem in London, we can put a message on a sign on the M25 to uh, help people avoid that problem. These operations are around the clock, 24-7, 365 days a year, including Christmas Day. London's busiest roads, the Red Routes, or the Transport for London Road Network, are divided into 23 individual routes or corridors each one managed by a corridor manager. The corridor manager is basically charged with maintaining or improving journey time reliability on the corridors, and that involves numerous different methods of control, but the ones that we primarily deal with are UTC controlled signals, that's urban traffic control. Basically the live traffic system where we can monitor lots of junctions all across London, and we can control the timings of those signals from our desk. Let's say, for example, you've got a three-lane carriageway reduced to two lanes. We can actually manipulate the timings to mitigate against the impact of that incident. Signal time reviews is looking at the green time that each arm of a junction receives, making sure that we don't give too much green time one particular movement so we don't flood the downstream network. Each engineer has assigned a corridor, and one of the things they have to do is effectively walk the network, looking at the different issues they may have. So it may be parking issues, loading issues, uh, whether we can make some physical changes on the network that would improve journey time reliability. I think that's what drives a lot of people, that you can actually tangibly see the difference and the benefit that you make. The London Traffic Control Centre would manage the daily operation when a major event happens. However, if a certain scenario happens and they don't have contingency plans available, we would be readily available to, to generate those plans at that time. Planning and managing major events on the road network is what we do here in London Streets. We look at all types of events, from demonstrations or marches and rallies, through to sporting events like the London Marathon or the Bupa 10K. We're involved in the active management of traffic around all those events and liaise with all the other stakeholder groups like the police, the event organisers, uh, London Ambulance, to make sure that it's a holistic event when it comes off. In the planning stage, we'll consider a number of things like road closures, perhaps the deployment of police officers to complement what we're doing with the traffic signals, and also to try and mitigate the impacts of works that are taking place at the same time as the event. We plate over a trench and you can use it during the day and then come back and work on it at night so we disrupt the network less. 
Our approach to management of major events is, is simple really, to try and facilitate the event, but also to get the right balance to minimise the impact of the event on congestion on the road network. A very impressive victory in the Continental Cup a few weeks ago. She really is here to make a statement, and she's come here as the number one in number this, one this one discipline, and she's in the top half a dozen in the world. In the world. She knows that she's going to have to run much more like a sprinter and not like a 400 runner, and she could take a medal here. Williams had the lead as they head around towards the home straight. How much has he left in reserve for the second half of the race? This is like a bit of a resurgence for the athlete who reached the Olympic final six years ago. We pride ourselves on running the road network as efficiently and professionally as we can every day of the week, but the Olympics is a totally unique challenge. This is multiple events over a wide geographical area over a very long period of time. Usually we do one or two days. This time we've got about a 100 day protracted period where we're going to have a lot more activity on the network. For us, the lead up is starting from the Diamond Jubilee, then we run into the Olympic Torch Relay, then we've got like the actual Olympic Games, and then between the Olympics and the Paralympics, we've still got Notting Hill Carnival and our normal annual events taking place. It's the equivalent of something like over 20 world championships taking place all at the same time in one city. It's going to be pretty crazy. Not much sleep. Success for me means no athlete or official late for their event, people are able to get to where they want to be, and that we don't unnecessarily disrupt the rest of London in achieving that. The Olympic Route Network and the Paralympic Route Network is a designation of certain routes that will give the um, Olympic family the ability to move around the city and they will have priority on that route. The Olympic Route Network is the road itself and it's open to all traffic. The Games Lane is one lane on that road which is dedicated to Games family vehicles. We basically have four types of routes. The core network, which is the length of road where most of the Games family traffic will travel. We've then got a venue network. Those routes only operate on the days when the venues are in operation. If anything happens on the ORN or the venue ORN, we've then got an alternative ORN, which is our contingency route. On several days of the Games, we've got things like the marathon, the triathlon, the cycle road race, the cycle time trial. On those days, the ORN can't be used in certain locations and we reroute onto the alternate network. And then the fourth one is the training venue routes and these are the routes that take the athletes out to the training venues and back again. We're going to work very closely with the Olympic family to make sure that we know where key vehicles are and also that we understand what the journey and schedule times that they're operating to. Games family vehicles will have tracking devices uh, and the monitoring data will be fed straight into the control centre so we will be able to see instantaneously if there's any problem or any kind of delay. We're putting in junction alterations, we're closing down some signal junctions so that you effectively sail straight through the junction and we're putting in quite a lot of um, parking restrictions to make sure that uh, there's no obstruction on the games lanes in particular. First of all, we're looking for compliance rather than enforcement, so the messaging that goes out before the, the Olympics about the Games lanes hopefully will make people realise that they shouldn't go into them. On top of that, there will be CCTV camera enforcement of the lanes, so if vehicles do break down or obstruct the Games lanes, we will quickly move in and remove that vehicle. There's about 80 kilometres of temporary road markings that we have to put in, 4,000 temporary signs, about 17 kilometres of barriers. Clearway 2012 is a project we've been running for about two or three years now to ensure that there are no planned works happening on the ORN and its, uh, its support roads during the course of the Olympics and the lead up to the Olympics. All of the traffic signals have been upgraded to top-notch standards. That's an investment of around £12 million, so London is already gaining the benefits of that investment. There'll be an ORN user guide produced so that by games time, we hope that everybody will be very familiar with it and understand exactly what it's about. In spite of everything we're doing, we recognise that certain parts of the network are going to be exceptionally busy during games time. So that's why we're planning an extensive programme of travel demand management measures to reduce the background levels of traffic at key locations across the city. Travel demand management is about encouraging people to think about the way that they travel during the games encouraging people to reduce their need to travel, perhaps use a different route or go to a different location, 
travel at less busy times of the day or taking another mode of transport. It's important that we get those messages out there and we're going to do that by giving information to satellite navigation providers, radio broadcasts, um, putting it on online journey planners to help people with their planning journeys. Freight is a particular concern for us with all of the extra loading and parking restrictions that we're going to have on the Olympic routes around the venues and in central London. It's vital that we get clear messages to local businesses, to freight operators and to their suppliers that they're going to need to plan in advance and do things differently during games time. We've developed a self-help toolkit so businesses can develop their own games time action plan. They may need to allow for higher than usual stock levels, to plan for more overnight deliveries or other ways of working to ensure that they can continue to operate and that they themselves can benefit from having the games here in London. We're working with 50 business intermediaries which covers about 200,000 organisations across London. The general background demand reduction target for the TDM programme is 30%, so this should have a significant effect on the operation of both public transport and highways networks. The Olympic and Paralympic Games are quite simply the greatest show on earth. Everybody is really enthusiastic about it. There are even people who've put off their retirement to make sure they're here for it. Yes, I want to go and I want to watch the events, but also making sure that the road network operates smoothly is really exciting. Now the Olympics is getting closer and closer, there's definitely a buzz about the place. I think it's the, the scale and duration of them that will make them our biggest challenge ever. The Olympics will be a huge challenge for us, but it's just a slightly bigger challenge than we've already got. We do this every single day, so we know exactly what we're doing. We've done a lot of work during the bid. We've seen it all the way through to the conclusion. So being there at the end of it, uh, of what will be a successful Games is really exciting to all of us. Success for us is that the front page of the newspaper is about sport and not transport. We'll never be complacent and we're confident that we'll have the right skills and resources in place to ensure that we can play our part in making London 2012 the most successful Olympics ever.